Okay, T. Tom Offit is our is our guest of EX Ministries, and we're talking about, I guess in part, we are talking about the truth behind hip hop, and we kind of have to do that mm -hmm. to talk about Mace, mm -hmm. um, who, well, and I, you know, I'm going to yield the floor to T. Tom on that. I don't want to jump too far ahead, yeah. but one of the things I guess I wonder is, are we dealing with true converts? And, I, and not that anyone can speak with authority on that issue, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that there are some things you can look at early on that would say, hold up, this person shouldn't be in this position. This person shouldn't be doing that. You know, true convert or not, there needs to be some time, you know. Yeah. Anyway, but let's get back. Uh, Teton, you still there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. And I saw in the turban that you got your coffee, so we're re <laughs> really, we're ready to lean in on this, right? <laughs> lean in. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. It's, <laughs> um, it's tough, man. It's a tough subject because, again, we're talking about people that have took something and, and made it their identity. Hmm. And so when you're talking about what makes me who I am, this is my identity. Hip-hop is who I am. This is the way I dress, the way I talk, the way I think, the way I look. So it's an up against the establishment. So I'm going to do what I want to do. Case in point, I can go down to the subways of Lower East, Lower East in Manhattan or, or Harlem or New York and just spray paint the subways because I want to express myself, knowing that it's against the law. Right? Wow, yes, mm. yes. Mm. I, I want to stand out and play my music real loud so people can hear my music, whether it's the language is vulgar or whatever, but it's my right. I can do what I want to do. I can dress the way I want to wear, dress, dress and act however I want to act because I'm expressing art. But what that does, it, it, it conflicts the parent culture called American culture. Okay. Hmm. And, and so what we saw when I was overseas, I saw Japanese people uh, calling each other the N-word. I saw, I interviewed Japanese culture, cultural people in the community, and they were angry with black culture because what it had done, it had destroyed the traditions of the Japanese culture. So the young Japanese people no longer wanted to embrace their history and their heritage. They wanted to sag their pants. They wanted to talk broken English, fry their hair, and, and spray paint the community up with music and, and all types of uh, degradation. So wow. um, so this is what's happening. It's a culture of rebellion. But on the end part of that, there's a part of that that we can lean ourselves to and say, oh, it's okay, you know, the music, and it and, and, and nothing wrong with the music or whatever. But the reality of it is it, the industry didn't know what to do with it. Because if you remember, Nikki and, and Will, at one time it was called, you had hip-hop, and then you had rap music. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Now, what they end up doing, they end up merging them together because when I was coming up to be a hip hop, mm -hmm. you was weird, you, you dressed strange, you was mm -hmm. too religious, and something was wrong with you. You always talk about that God stuff. Wow. All right. All right? And now to be a rapper, you was just a guy out there, you know, moving the crowd, the MC, you know, party after party, whatever, whatever. So these things got merged together for a marketing tool, and for so long, we were led to think that what a rapper, a Christian rapper is doing is hip-hop, but what they did, it gave them authenticity, it gave them an identity, and it, offered, and it opened up doors for them to be recognized and accepted by a pop culture. Oh, my goodness. This, man, you know, I just want to pause for a second because I want to make sure that our listeners are getting this because, you know, when we think about words and a lot of times people throw out and they'll say oh it's just semantics it's just wording but words have meaning and and they speak of something that we really need to take note of when i mean so when you're talking about somebody saying okay i don't want to be identified as a christian rapper i i'm 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 hip hop that's i just you know i'm a hip hopper who happens to be christian can you tell me what in fact that person is actually saying that person is actually saying is that I have identified myself with the world system. I'm a part of this system. And although I am a part of this system, there's a, I'm a byproduct of the kingdom of God. You can't love one and be a part of the other. And so by a name association, I want people to know that my identity is a part of your identity. As the young man who you're referring to, he said in one of his songs, uh, we got the same mama. Hi, hip hop. We got the same mom. Yes. Okay. I heard that. Right. And so you hear them say, "We we are all the same." No, you're not the same because when I remember, Nick, <laughs> when I remember when I left the hip hop subculture, 
they were they were crowding me with all these Christian rap CDs. But the more I got closer to God, and the more I wanted to truly be a disciple of Christ, I didn't want none of that. I couldn't eat it, couldn't contain it, couldn't embrace it because it reminded me of what I used to do and who I used to be. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there there was a time and space where I had to take a break from you. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And so what has happened? These guys have found their identity in hip hop. They grew up without their fathers. They're looking for validation. They're still hurting and, and full of rejection. And so what happens is this is the only way that I can express myself. I, you know, I can't express myself by being a father and taking care of my children and getting a full-time job. i got to use art as my identity, okay? Mm. And so what happens, that becomes a part of you. And so, yeah, I can be a Christian. I can make this a job. But no, expressing yourself and being an entertainer is not a real job because what you do as doing that, you do nothing but please people. Mm. And in order to keep before the people, you got to give them what they want. So if a person... is going to change. Your message is going to eventually change. So if a person is saying, because I really, I'm genuinely, I'm trying to understand this, Teton. I'm not, you know, usually right. I have weighted questions and I, I have a direction I want to go. But I really am sitting here as a student and, and, and I'm asking these questions and I'm being genuine in the asking of these questions. Uh-huh. So when Lecrae raps uh-huh. and says, uh, you know, we've got the same mama hip hop, you know, what what does that mean? Because, I mean, I've listened to that. I've heard that in the lyrics, but, you know, it just kind of goes in one ear and out the other. I'm not really focused on what he's saying. This I don't help me understand that. Well, I mean, come on, just, just, just break it down real simple. OK. You know, you know, we know what a bad child is, right? Yes. Yes. One okay. without a father or one whose father. Right, right. Yeah. Fatherless. Now look at the hip hop, the history of hip hop, how it came about. They run around without fathers, without leadership. So music and art becomes their fathers, self expression. So I can identify with you because I'm full of rejection and hurt and, 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 and pain and all these types of things. I have not resolved my issues. So I'm going to use what I do to give me an identity. And oh, by the way, genuinely, I'm expressing Christ. You understand what I'm saying? But you got, there's a lack of wisdom, a lack of understanding, and because they're not fully healed from the, the natural issues of life. Because on the documentary, and I'm just giving you an example, on the documentary, yes. you saw artist after artist. I, I grew up without my daddy. I didn't have a father. Yes. What I did in art and music was to show people myself and how good I was. So that was what made them feel good about themselves, the seeking for validation and affirmation from what they do and not who they are. So how much more so when you have, oh man, the weight of this is hitting me like a ton of bricks, because how much more so when you have a very public figure like Lecrae, who is now saying, not only did I not have a father naturally, because he knows, he says that, he, he admits that, he didn't have his father in the home, so he grew up without that oversight, but now he is actually, in fact, distancing himself from the heavenly father that he claimed brought him into this family. He's now saying, I don't want to publicly wear that label if it means it's going to keep me in one s- segment of the of the population. That actually has a deeper meaning than I even realized. Yeah, it, it, it's very deep. Um, I, I, like I said, I think the brother is really naive in his expressions. And I would hope, we would all hope that he would come to some understanding, but what he is doing, he's denying Christ just by words alone and association alone. In other words, in order for me to get to a place with, with, where I want to do, I can't carry the identity that's truly associated with who lives in me. Mm-hmm. So I got to do this on the back end where, you know, I'm in the studio, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm behind the scenes, and I'm going to let y'all know I'll post all these photos of me doing this. But the reality of it is, is that you're coveting after where they have, and they know that. And you know, nobody's being converted. Yes, and I think that's something that we need to say, Teton, because you have so many people who, when you call these things out, for example, and again, I'm not, I am not trying to beat up Lecrae. I, I, I'm, I hope that people understand that I have serious, weighty issues with what he's doing right now. And I've made no apologies for that. And I've not, you know, skirted around that issue. Speaking of skirts, when you have people that that have his influence doing things that the culture dictates. And when I say the culture, I mean the culture of hip hop. 
So if hip hop tells you that men now wear skirts, if you are a hip hopper, you will do like Lecrae did and you will wear a skirt in your music video. This is a problem. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. That's the government of the subculture that is inspired and controlled by people who don't love God. Now, here's the thing, Nikki. The, 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 the naysayers will argue that we're being uh, radical or irrational, but the people who have said what hip-hop is are still alive. Right. They're still alive telling you what it is. So how would you, being a, a Christian rapper who rap in the church, who, who encourages the believer, or who's on the other side of this argument, try to argue against the ones who say this is what it is. You can't. It's a, you, you know, it's a religion. It's a culture. This is a lifestyle. This is the way we live. This is how we get our identity. And so corporate America does not, is not concerned about a believer who happened to be a, a Christian, who happened to be a, a rapper who's doing rap music. If you follow his catalog, you're seeing that the message is being watered down even further. Now, this is nothing new. This has been going on since Thomas Dorsey. This is not new. We're, so many of us should not be shocked at what he's doing. If we know history, this is a pattern that has been going on from the very beginning. Ask Stevie Wonder. Mm-hmm. Ask Aretha Franklin. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Ask Johnny Gill. Ask all these people who started out saying, I'm doing something, you know, I'm a Christian, but mm-hmm. I just happen to be an artist. And right. Entertained. Right. You know? Speaking speaking of that, let's let's just say this, and I want to make sure that we say this several times. Um, the DVDs that your ministry produces uh, that are out there for people to watch and make their own decisions, which, right. you know, my goodness, the, the arguments are so compelling. Where can people get them? And um, especially, your, I think your most recent one is the Trojan Horse, Pride of Life? Yes, ma'am. The Trojan Horse, Pride of Life. It's uh, Trojan Horse 2, actually. It's a documentary okay. uh, that, that really kind of deals exactly in detail what we're talking about right now. Setting a standard in Christ. Setting a standard in Christ. Urban Family Talk.